Hello viewers! Today we are going to struggle with another BMW F10. Uh, the customer complaint is that the car cranks but doesn't want to start. So now I'm going to show you and we're going to confirm the customer complaint. So here's the car. This is F11 actually, it's not a F10, but does matter, it's, it's the same car. So let me show you what the car does. Yes, this kind of hot, so I'm going to be struggle to sit in this car. Okay, so as we can see right now, I'm going to try to crank it. Oh, and start it, of course. Cannot. Maybe I took the wrong key. Okay, I have one more F10 in the shop, so let me try with the other key. Okay, I think I found the right key, so let's give it a try. As we can see, we have a RPM signal, but uh, nothing than this. So let me switch on the diagnostic tool and I'm going to show you what we're going to figure out. Okay, so let's connect to the DME. So F10, F11. Uh, let me put on the ignition. And uh, yeah, for those of you that are wondering, yes, we are at neutral, but this is not the issue that the car has because the gearbox is in what to call limp hump mode because we have tightened up the bolt underneath so to be able to tow up the car to the shop. But yeah, even on parking, the car doesn't want to start, and the car should be able to start like that. So let's see what is happening. And this is what fault code we have. Real pressure monitoring on engine starting, so the pressure is too low. So let's see now what wife data we're going to gather to see what is happening. So the most important pits that we're going to check is two of them. So uh, let me find them. Okay, real pressure. Uh, this is the high pressure which the high pressure fuel pump is providing, but I want to check the press supply pressure, which is from the low pressure side, from the pump in the fuel tank. This is almost that important as on the high pressure. So, okay. Right now, as we can see, the rail is reading around 10 bars, uh, and the low side is reading almost nothing. 19 millibars is, let's call it zero. So I'm going to crank up the engine, and this should rise up at least to three or four bars. And uh, yeah, the rail pressure should rise up at least two or three hundred bars. So to be able this car to start up. So right now I'm going to crank it up and let, let's see what is happening. And yeah, as you can see, we are sitting at the same amounts of numbers, which means I'm going to start, of course, with the press supply pressure because, as I told you, 16 17 millibars is pretty much zero. And I don't want to continue doing this because if you continue cranking up the engine while the press supply pump doesn't supply the high pressure fuel pump with fuel, you can damage it and this can lead to aluminium particles in the fuel injectors. The scenario can go bad pretty fast. You're going to need to replace the high pressure fuel pump, the injectors, you're going to need to clean them perfectly the reservoir and it's a terrible job. It's not my first rodeo and I know what is this issue with these cars. So I'm not going to continue cranking it up because I see that uh, the press supply fuel pump doesn't have any pressure at all and I'm not going to risk it. So I'm going to remove the rear seats and I'm going to see what is happening underneath. I'm going to check for power and ground to the press supply pump. If they are present, I'm going to check the actual reading of the press supply pump with a manual gauge. Actually, first of all, I'm going to check for any kind of buzzing noise because this pump should make some noise and uh, some small amount of vibrations when it works. Uh, and if I don't see any of it and I have power and ground, pretty obvious the pump should be replaced. So let me check all of this and uh, we're going to continue when I get to the pump itself. Okay, so a little bit fast forward uh, because I had a lot of work and I did not manage to do a detailed video about the diagnosis and 
work through how to make this engine start up. But I'm going to try to show you briefly so to know how to diagnose your car when you have an issue like this. Yeah, you are already probably going to see what we have done. Uh, but first of all, here is the fuel pump, the low pressure, the press supply fuel pump. So the first thing that I did is to check for a power supply on this plug here with these two thicker wires, violet and brown. So I'm going to show you what procedure I'm using and when I'm doing it, you should have a voltage supply here and a ground. So I have done this and I didn't see any voltage here, any supply, which means the next step which I took. So after I saw that I don't have a power supply, the next step was to check the module which is controlling this power supply. So as you can see, we have, uh, let's say a new one. This is a second hand unit, but pretty much this is the most biggest issue, which uh, go bad all the time, like the go plug module on the older engines and on the newer also. But this is what controls the press supply pressure. And yeah, I checked here, we had power, ground and communication, uh, which was on which wire. Yeah, this, this is the power and grounds which are going to the pump. As we can see, we have the same color wires. And the rest which I needed to check were this. The red one was power once again and the blue one was the ground. This is the main power and ground for the module. After that, he sent it to the pump when it's supposed to. And uh, yeah, I checked the, I believe it was cable wire or something like that. I forget, but I checked the communication wire and it was okay. So that's why I diagnosed this that it was bad. We have replaced it after that I needed to code it. So yeah, I have done this. And uh, right now we have a power supply to the pump. But it turns out when we establish power supply to the pump, it turns out that the pump were, were not making enough pressure. So the thing that we have done to confirm this is to connect a regular analog pressure gauge to the supply line, which I believe it was this one, from the pump and to see how much exact pressure this pump is making. And on the analog gauge we had 2.9 bars, which is far away from the spec. I'm going to show you after a second what is the minimum spec for this. After that we were like, okay, we need to replace the pump. But when we remove the pump, you can see what is happening inside and yeah now it's a little bit clean <laughs> it was much worse because we tried to clean it actually fine to be honest but in the end of the day the owner decided to buy a second hand fuel reservoir so to fix it better than this yeah the, in perfect case you're going to replace with a new fuel reservoir with a new pump so to be sure that everything is going to be fine but in the end of the day yeah he decided to buy a second hand unit second hand fuel reservoir with a second hand pump and everything else and let me show you now on the bleeding procedure uh, what we have so just to put the ignition on uh, the key needs to be in the car so ignition on yeah the battery is a little bit weak that's why I am on a power supply so I'm going to connect and I'm going to show you how much pressure we have right now. And uh, yeah, after we replace the pump, we have cleaned up all the lines underneath between the reservoir and the engine. We have cleaned them with a brake cleaner and uh, compressed air. Plus we have changed the fuel filter. So pretty much everything is supposed to be fine, hopefully. Now I'm going to show you what pressure we are making. Okay, so drive fuel system bleeding bleed fuel system uh, it's going to take 2 minutes and we should have at least 20 liters actually in, in the first time we had only 10 liters and uh, it was not giving me to, to do this procedure so we need to add 10 more liters and interestingly enough uh, previously this reservoir this unit actually was not reading correctly the level of the fuel so now we have fixed two issues the level sensor and the fuel supply so yeah this can trigger some fault codes and now it should start as we can see 120 seconds and 
as we can see, the minimum pressure is 3.9 bars here. Yeah. 1000 millibars equals 1 bar. So this is the duty cycle of the pump. As we can see on 550 duty cycle, we are making around 3 bars. And uh, when this increases, we're going to get to 4 and 4.2, I believe it was. Still, we're going to get to this pressure when we get on higher duty cycle. So let's wait a, a bit and uh, I'm going to show you that this is going to increase the pressure. And previously, interestingly enough, with the old pump, which was 2 point, which we have measured with the gauge once again, 2.9 bars, the reading here was 20 millibars. And yeah, as we can see, the duty cycle goes to 95 and now we have 4.2, which means we are more than the minimum pressure. But now pretty much the car should start up. I have done this two times. This is the third time that I'm doing this bleeding procedure. So I'm going to show you is the car going to start or not. But I think it's going to start now when we have this uh, pressure higher than before. And once again, uh, on the old pump we had uh, measuring with the gauge 2.9 bars. Uh, but the sensor, which let me show you, this is once again N57. Uh, so let me quickly show you. This is the this is the lines. This is the both few lines. And uh, yeah, here is the yeah, this is the feed line which we have a low pressure sensor here. This sensor is reading how much pressure we are getting from the low pressure pump. Low supply pressure pump. So if this goes bad, bad, you're going to have issues once again. But in our case, this sensor with the old pump was reading only 20 millibars, which is 0.02 bars, which is nothing. Uh, and still the pump was measuring 2.9 bars at the unit but if we go through from here the line after that is the filter and after that is the line and after that is the sensor it was dropping to 0.02 bars so yeah probably this is not the best test probably the best test is to measure the fuel pressure somewhere here probably at this holes uh, because it's after the filter and yeah if you have issues with the filter once again, you're going to have a big dropout. We didn't uh, try with the old filter to try with this pump. It's probably that the pressure drop was from the filter also, but I'm not 100% sure. We didn't try it. I don't, didn't want to, to risk it because of the debris in the reservoir. I want a fresh filter. This is the thing that is telling what is the exact low pressure. So let's see where we at. Bleeding ended. So I'm going to end up this. I don't want to for the rest procedures, I just want to see is the engine going to start. Okay, I'm going to close up this. So I'm going to disconnect the power supply and uh, let's give it a try and see is the engine going to start. So I forget to record the first first start, but I'm going to show the car that the car starts and runs. So just to find the key. Yeah, okay. And as we can see, it runs. And actually it runs smooth. I have drive it, it uh, has plenty of power, it feels just about right. I think I'm going to end up, end up the video here. I just wanted to show you uh, how to diagnose this issue. Yeah, I need to assemble the rear seats and the luggage compartment. And yeah, I have seen this that from a bad press supply pump, your press supply pump module uh, can go bad. And when you replace it, uh, when you have a bad press supply pump, you can still not fire up your car so most of the time you're going to need to replace the pump uh, plus this module uh, in this case this was the issue the module and the pump uh, in our case we changed the whole reservoir because as we saw it, it had a lot of debris inside the reservoir and uh, in the perfect case scenario you're going to want your reservoir to be clean as possible and yeah don't forget to replace your uh, fuel filter and clean your uh, fuel lines if you want everything to be fine uh, when you replace your reservoir in the perfect case the reservoir should be brand new, uh, but in our case we were lucky, the second hand reservoir were in good condition and it was clean and the pump inside was good. Actually previously the owner had some issues with the fuel gauge indicator. It was blocked in the middle, but now it's showing where it's supposed to be. <coughs> so we have fixed both issues, the no start condition and the fuel gauge is now reading as it's supposed to be. So okay guys, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.